Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. And uh, I always start my lectures, unfortunately, the conventional conferences by thanking the organizers for making me feel at home when I leave Ladakh at minus three, you know. All these overly air-conditioned halls that I'm taken to. So I, first of all, want to thank you for actually giving me the warmth of Bangalore today. <laughs> I always come dressed for the place. So I'm very lightly dressed, but I have over time learned and I have kept a down jacket in my bag, wondering if it would be in one of those halls. So you're already indigenizing, you know, not uh, aping what happens in New York and London and creating that in the whole area to bring it down to plus 18 when it is pleasant plus 30 outside and then putting many pieces. So thank you for that. One little tip, I'm all about energy we are. This is really warm and great for me, but later in summer, if you get it a little hotter, you can grow vines on it. We used to do it in tropical Nepal, and it's beautiful, and it cools the place, and you don't need air conditioning, and you could be an example for others also, since we are talking about energy. I'm grateful, and I want to thank this team uh, for all that they are doing for the planet and for the country also rather than going away to greener pastures in other countries. They're staying put here, facing the problems and solving them. This is what I call uh, warriors of uh, the planet. Yeah, I'm grateful, and I'm grateful for all the people who are supporting them, Mr. Murthy and investors here. This is where we must invest and make this grow. Indigenization is truly great, but I'm sure out of it will come solutions that will be used by many, many places around the globe. And I've seen you look forward to uh, the tropical regions of the world which share similar conditions. So that's a very good vision to have, but I was actually surprised because the products you are making and that we are testing in Ladakh actually have much larger range than just tropical. You're um, lithium titanium oxide batteries that we are using have a range in temperatures up to minus 30. And that's what we face challenges constantly when we are trying to find energy systems for the military, for communications like life I set on mountains. Temperatures are so cold. We have done a lot of innovation by passive solar heating, but the chemistry, if it can solve, even better. So you have actually a range that could cover the whole spectrum and not even just uh, the tropical. So otherwise, indigenizing is uh, the key uh, for places like Ladakh when we talk of energy. And generally, on the planet, I, you talked about automobiles contributing roughly 21% and getting a very bad name uh, for emissions and pollution. Actually, housing, building sector is the biggest polluter, which many don't realize. It goes to roughly 39% of the emission coming from buildings. And uh, in that spirit, in Ladakh, where most of the energy used is in heating of the buildings, many people don't see the indigenizing potentials and go for sophisticated, unnecessary technologies like batteries even for heating. Many projects in Ladakh right now are looking at that. Whereas if you study, research is done, energy needs in a establishment or even a home in a cold place, roughly 80% is on heating, maybe a little on cooking. Electricity forms a very small percentage because heating is so huge. And talking of indigenization, we said heating doesn't need lithium iron or uh, lead acid. Heat batteries can actually be best made of water. And therefore, all our buildings use water as the battery because water is this beautiful material that has a high specific heat. Actually, that's why um, most coastal areas have a more stable temperature because the the water bodies act as that battery, if you call it battery. So we use water in the walls to 
deal with the 80% of energy need. So you have done away with a lot of products and chemicals that may spoil the planet. But then for the rest, 20 or 30%, these are the technologies. And I'm so happy that you are at the cutting edge with deep tech and all right here in India. <clears throat> and I look forward to you leading uh, the rest of the planet in this. And I want to finally thank, on behalf of our glaciers in Ladakh, all our you know, endangered animals like the snow leopards and the black-necked cranes, because it is because of uh, life in the big cities like Bangalore, Beijing, Paris, New York, where you consume so much and use up so much, waste so much, emit so much, and these technologies are going to drastically reduce that, and the beneficiaries actually will be us at the forefront of this uh, climate crisis, the ones in the high Himalayas and those at the seashores. So by choosing uh, where the pain is, you know, like commercial vehicles as you target. I'm so happy that people are really optimizing and indigenizing to see where it all comes from and dealing with that. Uh, commercial vehicles definitely is where there should be, there are more people than others, and there should be more and more people as we try and learn to manage not just supply side, but also demand side. The problem in the world is that we only think of replacing this with that and doing the same things as before. A little good effect, yes, but the biggest effect will be if we change the whole scenario, not just change the supply source and materials, but also the demand side that we change our lifestyles to use more public transport, which is where you're aiming. So in the coming years, I would like to see more people going towards public uh, transport or commercial vehicles than we have. And then also parallelly solving that problem by technologies like this. So it will have to be a hand in hand um, collaboration of changing the supply side and very much you know, educating and grooming people, starting with children, to live a life that is more planet friendly. So with that wish, I really thank you all for doing all this. Thanks.